so good. The, the first two episodes, we talked about the power of disruption. We are yes. disruption, so of course we, we did that. Then the power of respect, because disruption without respect, we found out all of a sudden it means nothing. Because with, with respect, we can learn every single day of our life and we can go very, very far. Now, there is another big driver that I know you are really a fun uh, talking about, which is the driver of curiosity. Why being curious is so exceptionally important in, uh, in, uh, yeah, in going forward in uh, watchmaking, in life, and in business uh, as well, in all the aspects. So at the limited edition, Jean-Claude, we've been a bit curious because when we decided to only do the independent watchmakers, Somebody would have said, you're crazy, you're never going to make it profitable, it's impossible. The numbers, I remember somebody telling me, the numbers will never work, blah, blah, blah. But of course, curiosity is an exceptional tool that you can find to do what? Or you can use to do what, in your view? You know, curiosity <clears throat> is the first thing that a baby, when he's born, is going to do. Because he's curious, he will find the, the, uh, the mother and he will have, I would say, the first food from the mother. Curiosity, uh, every child is naturally curious because that belongs to the learning process. That's why young kids are saying, Papa, why do we have clouds that are white? and clouds that are dark gray in the sky. Why do we have roses? And one rose is red, and another one is yellow, and another one is rose. How come? That is the natural process, how a child is learning. Then comes a second process where we teach children because we think we have to do it uh, at a faster speed, uh, uh, a little bit more fast, and we teach him. And then the child is 25 and he starts in the normal life, in his professional life. At that moment, that is where he should be the most curious because when you start your job at 25, you know nothing. You, are, you know a lot of theories, but practically you don't know anything. That is why at that moment, you really need to be curious, to ask questions, and you have 20 years from 20 to 40 to learn, to experience, to become pragmatic. And then from 20 to 40, you are, you are in a learning process. And from 40 to 60, you make, you have learned 20 years, you have experience of 20 years, you have knowledge uh, uh, and pragmatism of 20 years. And then from 40 to 60, you're gonna make, you're gonna build your future. And then uh -huh. from 60 to 80, you have to give back because you cannot live, finish your life without having given back. Because every person that is on, life, on planet Earth will die, but before dying, you must transmit. Because if you have done for yourself, that's not important. What is important is how much you give back. So the curiosity, is the driving force and it's also the only driving force that avoids you to get old. To be old means I am not curious anymore. I think I know. That's dangerous. When people think they know, when people believe they don't have to learn, then they are getting old. And as long as you are curious, as long as you ask questions, means I learn. And as long as you learn, you stay young. So the curiosity 
is an extraordinary element that keeps us young and alive. It is amazing because uh, uh, in the path that you just illustrated, when you finish your studies and, you know, when, if you're lucky to, to finish with a degree, with an MBA, with yeah. a, you're kind of in a, in a situation where you're told that you are prepared, you're ready for the world. And that is, it, it's a lesson of humility to understand that that's a starting point rather than, you know, exactly. anything else. It, it, it's, it's the starting point just, you know. Uh, <clears throat> is like when you have a, a driving license. The day you get your driving license, don't tell me you know how to drive a car. Yeah, of course. <laughs> good, good, good analogy. Absolutely. You know, uh, go to the, go, go, come to the Swiss mountain where I show you some roads with a lot of snow and every yeah. guy who just had the, the, his permit today, he will fail Be, yeah. because you, it's like if you have your license for a helicopter pilot, you are dangerous because you just got your license. You need now practically 150 hours every year of practice. Practice makes the difference. <laughs> In theory, we all know the same. The difference comes from our experience. The experience is gold. That's gold. That is why <coughs> young people, they should always try in the first years of their career to learn as much as possible, to make experiences, to make mistakes, because the mistake is part of the learning process. And very often, our young kids, they leave the university, they have their master degree, whatever, and then they believe that they know. And then they shut their eyes and ears and they don't learn anymore because when you have convictions, you will not learn. When you have doubts, then you will learn because thanks to the doubt, you will ask questions. Hey, is this right? Uh, shall we do it that way? What is your experience, Mr. Beaver? And then you can explain and then people are learning. And the most important is really, when you leave the university, you have the responsibility that you have to start to learn. Then people say to me, yeah, but I had five years of studies. I have learned during five years. Yes, but you learned thanks to a teacher who gave you every day the food. The it knowledge is, yeah. was giving with a spoon. Ah, mm. And then you get every day, five years long knowledge through the professor. But once you have left university, professor is not there anymore. And then you must learn by yourself. And learning by yourself or having a teacher that teach you is not the same process. <laughs> very, very true. And uh, you know, Jean-Claude, you made me re-experience my, uh, my own life path because I started the limited edition at 40, when I was 40. So it can't be a coincidence. Bravo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt like, you know, there was something more that I needed to achieve and, and the whole journey started. But uh, Jean-Claude, it's so interesting. I want to ask you then two things. Uh, so curiosity has a lot to do with humility. And how do you read that humility, that willingness to, to learn? So how did you choose your men, you know, all across your career? How could you read in the eyes of these young people, the ones that were genuinely curious and the ones that were just coming with a bit of a, of a you know, of, of a... You know, yeah, sometimes it's up, easy. Yeah. Sometimes it's easy. You have people who, after the second or third question, are asking, how many hours do we have to work every day? <laughs> or yeah. or how, how many holidays do we have? Do we have four yeah. weeks or five weeks per year? Yeah. That's the natural <laughs> selection. <Yeah. laughs> you, <laughs> you can already, you know, you can... Uh, <laughs> then yeah, you know. It's the first filter. That is the first simple filter. But yeah. <laughs> quite useful because many people have this question. How much will I make? How many holidays do I have? And uh, in, in the, how long will I, have to, will I have to stay in this position before I grow up? Those questions are for me normally, <laughs> in general, 
they select the guy or the woman on the yeah. left side. Then, yeah. then yeah. you have the eyes. The eyes can never lie. With my mouth, with my tongue, I, with my voice, I can lie. <laughs> well, with my pen, I can write and I can lie. But with the eyes, when I talk to you with my eyes, the eyes cannot lie. <laughs> so you must know how to detect the eyes of a person. <laughs> and you and I, I will be wrong. Yeah. I will be wrong. In 35% of the cases, I make the bad choice. Because how can I be sure 100% how these people will develop? But at least at 70%, I know I'm right. And 70% being right is okay. I mean, uh, God is probably 100%, but I am not God. <laughs> so to be at 70% right is already not bad for an entrepreneur. And if in every, uh, and then last but not least, you must also have a certain generosity. Some people have a pretension to a job for which they don't have the capacities. And these people should not be condemned. They should just be moved to where they perform better. And, they can and learn. that's also the job of the uh, HR or from the boss. Uh, to see qualities of a person and not to condemn because he wanted to be uh, in the sales and finally you detect he's better on marketing. So just transform him and bring him to marketing. Uh, it's like in football. You, 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 you can see with uh, Chelsea uh, what Tuchel has been doing. The same team, same people, same players. Uh, nine games, he never lost. Just he changed certain players from the place. Here you, you play left, and that is also a big, a big responsibility of the boss or the, the, the boss of the HR. It's to put people to their right place yeah. where they perform the best. Yeah. I wish it happened with Juventus last night as well, but it didn't go very well, unfortunately. Ah, what a, what a mess. Why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great game, great game, though. But, great game, uh, yeah. yeah, because uh, you got nervous. <laughs> yeah, very, very anxious, very anxious. Um, in terms of being a watchmaker, Jean-Claude, we live funny times because orologically, you, you can easily think that everything has been done. On the other side, you can easily see on the market that actually, if you are crazier, Today, you can get more success because independent watchmaking is big. So this is a dichotomy. So how, how do you step out of that? As a master watchmaker, how do you keep curious to not to stop and sit to what has already been done and always finding a new way to interpret the time or to uh, uh, create mechanical complexity, if you like? Or you simplicity. Know, this, yeah, this is, uh, it, it has very much to do with your character. Some people, they love to repeat tradition at the best and the highest possible level of excellency. I give all my respect to these people. Thank you very much and bravo, I admire you. But in a certain way, your contribution to the development of the tradition is not there. What is there? The repetition of the tradition. You are able to repeat at perfection what the watchmakers of the 17th or 18th or 19th century have done. And I give a lot of respect. But my admiration goes also, and a little bit more, to people who say, listen, I cannot just repeat. I thought this morning when I woke up that if Mr. Breguet would be on the 9th or 10th of March 2021 and he would ima imagine a new movement, do you think he would take uh, on the plate a, a brass material? Never! 
he would say, hey, we have new materials available. Let's use them because they might be lighter, because uh, 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 we can have uh, uh, smaller tolerances, because the meta metal is more stable, etc. He will find many reasons how, why he should go to another material and leave somehow the repetition of tradition. And Very that good. is an important element. Try to bring an innovation in your tradition rather than just a repetition of your tradition. And the repetition is great, but that doesn't help much. And you know, there are always possibilities. Look in music. In music, you could believe every, everything has been played, but every day you have new songs coming out. It's infinite. It's mathematical, it's infinite. Uh, it's the same in art. You in can figure think it out, yeah. art, everything has been done. No, art is still moving. And you will never find an artist that will copy uh, what the Im impressionists have done. No, modern art goes its own way. And modern art connects to today or to tomorrow. While when you repeat, you connect to yesterday. And, and connecting and also, to yesterday or connecting to tomorrow gives you totally different emotions. And that's mm -hmm. another job. And I prefer to connect to tomorrow because tomorrow is the future than yeah. to connect to yesterday. It's like my friends. If I spend all my days and all my evenings with people that are 72 years old like me, no wonder I will get old. But if I spend my dinners and my days with young people that are 30, 40, 50 years old, then I can learn from these people. Then I can learn what is the latest uh, blue jeans brand, what is the latest shoe brand, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I, and then when you learn, you connect to the future. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is a misconception, though, Jean-Claude, because we, when we say, I like classic, it's a bit of a nonsense because what we call classic today was revolutionary centuries ago or yes. decades ago. So you, you can respect classic, of course, and you can learn a lot from it, but I agree with you. That's why I think for all the watchmaking brands that have the luck to have a big name of the past that they are trying to revamp, I think there is um, nearly a duty to bring the classicism, but also behave like that watchmaker would have done if he was here today. That's it's a very great point that you made, and um, I you totally know, agree. You know, there's one, one fantastic uh, uh, example. Um, as you know, the, the, um, the message of Hublot was or is fusion. Fusion in the watchmaking art. Now, we said, or I said in 2006, uh, hey, why can we not invent a new 18 karat gold? And everybody said, you want to invent 18 karat gold? <laughs> but I mean, it's impossible to invent 18 karat gold. I said, it's probably impossible to invent from scratch, but it's possible that you change the characteristics of gold. What do you mean? Uh, one, gold is heavy. Can we not have 18 karat gold super light? Two, uh, gold is extremely soft. So it scratches. Can we not have super hard gold that resists like ceramic? or like a diamond, uh, et cetera. So we said, hey, professor, it was Professor Mortensen from the uh, Technical School of uh, Lausanne. We said, can you work on that direction? I want a super light 18 karat gold, and I want a super hard uh, 18 karat gold. An unscratchable, super light. But, uh, then he said, why do you... If I can say, 
ex you were exercising curiosity because of course gold for us is just gold but actually gold is an alloy and as an alloy it can possibly be mo modified but it, it, exactly, exactly. Yeah. easy to and say so, afterwards and so after more than 2000 since tutankhamun who used the first alloy uh, uh, the period of Tutankhamun in Egypt. Since then, we are the first people, the first brand that has invented a hundred percent new alloy where gold is unscratchable and gold is super light. God damn, that is a contribution of the 20s, it was uh, no, of the 21st century to the metallurgy of gold. We have contributed to make gold to evolve. And that these contributions are for me what is important. And what is important also is what you said. These watchmakers of the past, uh, we named them, whatever. These people were scientific. Breguet was member of the Academy of Science from Paris which was the highest degree in the in, uh, in academy of science so they were scientific people they were disruptive they were like the royal society in, uh, like the royal society in london as well yeah exactly uh, and i think it's a shame it's a pity that we just repeat what these guys have done they have done it okay take advantage learn from there take examples but don't repeat the same. It's like if I'm a musician and I play now the music of the Beatles or of Mozart. What for? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Although, although Jean-Claude, there is a massive, there seems to be a massive uh, uh, split between the, the few classics that everyone recognizes in watchmaking. So everyone wants a watch from those three, four brands. And then the crazy independence uh, and whatever is in the middle is kind of forgotten at the moment. So uh, do you also see that the people are swinging from the, the classic, the show, but everyone wants one because you want one if you're a watch collector, moving more and more into these crazier and new propositions that are popping up? Yes, because uh, we need new propositions. Uh, we need blockbusters from the past, like Royal Oak, Nautilus, Rolex, uh, uh, Daytona, and Submarina, and, and GMT. Um, but we also like, we also would love to have something that is different. And there, who makes it? You have some people, like AP is starting to do it. Uh, you have some, but the ones that give us the highest creativity are quite often the small uh, uh, artists, the independent artists. And that's, that is also their future because their future only exists if they can discover or create a niche. Because if they leave the niche, then blah, the, these big brands or these big blockbuster like the Big Bang, like the, the, uh, uh, the Nautilus, like the, uh, uh, the Royal Oak, they, 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 they cannot exist. So yeah. independent can only exist if they go and they go for their niche and they must detect where is my niche? Where no, shall so to I be, To be alternative to something, you also need to have the com more conformist uh, yes, uh, yes, option. Yes, yes, you need both. The two things explain each other in a way. Exactly. jean -Claude, I could carry on for ages. I promised a couple of our uh, collectors to pass you a couple of questions if you still have 10 okay, minutes. Okay, yes. Well, one of them is because all the, all the questions that you're putting here on Instagram, guys, we can't pick them up because they go too quickly, unfortunately. So next time, send me a WhatsApp or an email and uh, I will do my best with, uh, with Jean-Claude. So Jean-Claude, do you think that like it was a big switch between moving from pocket watches to wrist watches, do you now see a switch between uh, wearing just one watch to wear two watches, one uh, smart watch and one mechanical watch? 
Do you see that as an epochal switch? I, I don't know if I see it wearing both at the same time. But alternatively, to have the two, depending what activity you are doing, I can see a good reason to have both. Yeah. But to have one on this wrist and one on this one, why not? Yeah. And if everybody wears two watches, we will sell double the, the numbers of watches. <laughs> so so I'm not against it. Absolutely. <laughs> Next question. But somehow, <laughs> okay. Sorry. But somehow I would say uh, each watch has a function socially, practically, uh, uh, in comfort, in performance. So a connected watch, I, I have uh, every, uh, I have five or six Apple uh, connected. I have three Tag Heuer, etc. So. I, and I, I wear them, <laughs> not today, but I wear them for sport uh, or if I go hiking in the mountains. Uh, but beside that, I also have my great watches, which I have pleasure to wear. So they are just two different products. I could, if I would live in Milano or in London, I would have an electric car. Uh, for uh, a, a smart car or whatever, uh, Fiat 500 uh, electric to drive into the city. But it yes. wouldn't avoid me to have a wonderful Ferrari or Porsche Cabrio uh, to, to, to go uh, in the summer and, and uh, to have uh, pleasure in driving. So the two are complementary because the two have different functions. And it's a little bit like that with the connected watch and the traditional watches, they have two different uh, uses, two different, uh, uh, yeah, two different so reasons to, to exist. Thank you, that was for uh, Peng, one of our collectors, his name is Peng. Now from uh, my partner actually, uh, Jassim Alamadi, business partner, asking uh, Mr. Diver, what do you think about the uh, collectors, watch collectors in the Middle East? How you've seen developing that scene uh, over the last, um, to the case? Oh, we have had for, for centuries collectors in the Middle East. <laughs> they have been big, big collectors for many, many years. The Tsars from uh, uh, Russia, the Pashas uh, from uh, uh, India, the Sheikhs from the uh, Middle East. They, they, have, they have been collecting watches uh, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. And in the Middle East, there is a real taste for beauty. There's a real taste for jewelry. There's a real taste for gold or platinum. And they have a culture. They understand it. And for me, the Middle East is one of the markets where I love to go because people understand. People are conscious. People, uh, uh, they have a, a heritage, a tradition in the Middle East. There's such a tradition of jewelry, of fine, and look at the art of the Middle East. So uh, uh, the Middle East is, of course, a big, big market for fine watchmaking art. We have, thank you very much, and thank you, Jasim, for your question. We have uh, people asking what we are, what we are wearing today, uh, Jean-Claude, I'll let, you, I'll let you first share the watch you're wearing on your wrist, if you want. I, I'm wearing uh, one of my, you know, I have a big uh, AP collection beside my Patek collection. Uh, I'm wearing a Cabinet Royal Oak. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> it's a piece made in 12, it's 12, uh, they made a series of 12. That's yeah. number two of 12. It's in white gold, and it's a very disruptive uh, movement, of yeah. course, from uh, Renault and Papi. Uh, and I love this watch. <laughs> and good. because I love it, I wear it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. by chance, I have it today. Next time you ask me the question, it will probably be another watch. But for the moment, it's my Cabinet Royal Oak, Cabinet number Royal. two out of 12, 12 pieces. 
Very good. I'm jumping completely to a different place, uh, Jean-Claude, with my Rashid Soroev Arrow watch. This is a 23-year-old, uh, 23 years old watchmaker. He's based in Ingusatia in Russia, and he works in his little workshop on his own. And this is his first production. He only made five five watches of this, and this is the first prototype. So uh, I have been using curiosity, you know, to get Bravo, there. <laughs> bravo, yeah. And it's great to have these young people, and it's great that we buy from them. It's great that because uh, when we buy their watches, it makes them a living. So uh, we have a responsibility also Absolutely. to buy uh, if we mm -hmm. like watches. We cannot only buy the big names. We must also, in a certain way, support some, uh, uh, yeah, some newcomers or some uh, new artists, and that's important to do. The possible stars of tomorrow. Yeah, we don't want to repeat the story of Van Gogh. Van Gogh only managed to work, to sell, I think, one picture to his own brother in his whole career, and, and we, we, you know, it's it's a shame to to hear even that. Um, Jean Claude, last question from one of our followers. Is asking now that you have more time for yourself. Is cheese become your first activity? How you spend the time? No, 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 no. My first activity is still watches. I have a lot of uh, projects. I help also people. I give advice, um, free advice, by the way. Uh, I just gave advice to uh, a brand that is making cosmetic for men. Yeah, you were saying, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, it's it's a guy, an Italian guy, and yeah. he called me, he said, Mr. Beaver, you are like a mentor for me. Can I meet you? I have a question. I am developing uh, some cosmetic for men. I said, if you, have, uh, if you are close to my home, come to my home, and I answer any question you would have. And I spent maybe an hour with him, and I gave him some advice. Uh, some recommendations, and uh, now I can see. I, I just saw he's developing quite well. <laughs> so I have. I I am also a member of a company called uh, Swiss Startup Group, uh, where we help startups in different ways, uh, either financially, or we find partners for the for them, or uh, we also put them on the on the on the on the market. Um, on the stock market, and uh, I have quite a few activities there. And today, uh, Federer has played for the first time with a new uh, shoe called On, o -N, which is a Swiss shoe. Uh, oh, yeah. Federer, like me, he's also a shareholder, like me. And uh, it was quite an emotion for me to, to see this startup called On, and to have uh, Roger Federer playing for the first time in his career Fantastic. with this new shoe. So you say, I have a lot of activities. So the cheese is just uh, I, 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 a hobby. I, 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 yeah, it's a hobby. I go on. But, but my, my main activity is really watches and helping to develop uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah, fantastic. And become a mentor, uh, uh, obviously. Yes. This answers one of the questions that I've seen passing by. Uh, somebody was asking, what is the most exciting company, a uh, young company, uh, younger than 10 years, that you, uh, you, you think is the most exciting, basically? That was the question. And I'm so excited by Redchip. I'm excited by Redchip. Red, yeah. I'm excited by Redchip. Uh, you know, Redchip is really probably could become the successor of Philippe Dufour oh, yeah. in the quality. The yeah. quality is exceptional. Uh, but uh, I also love Moser. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and <laughs> because Moser is for me tradition in the evolution. They don't repeat. <laughs> they interpret, they take things from the past and then they transform it. And in a certain way, uh, I must say chapeau, because they have a personality, they have guts, uh, they're not afraid to shock people, which oh, is good. <laughs> yeah. And you must shock people. Look, uh, so I would say Moser, I like Recep, who is an individual I like. 
I like François Paul Jour. Yeah, Richard, not, Richard is, Sorry. Yeah, François Paul is not a newcomer. He's already yeah. he's already an established name, and he's yeah. even more than a name. He's a brand. Yeah, um, Richard, I, Richard, at his age, the level he's got to at his age is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the the guy who makes his cases is uh, uh, Mr. Hagman, and Mr. Hagman has made all the minute repeater cases for Hublot, uh, for Blancpain, 40 years ago. And mm -hmm. he has made all the major Patek Philippe. He has uh, his workshop still in uh, Old Town Geneva, no? The courage and the imagination to recruit three days per week, uh, uh, Mr. Adman, to make his cases. So yeah. the cases yeah. are perfect, the movements are perfect. The, the, the... No, I think red chap, chapeau. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, and we finish on a nice note of uh, some of the best uh, watchmaking out there. And uh, Jean-Claude, thank you very much. We are supposed to, uh, to do this for half an hour and we always, with the pleasure of conversating, <laughs> we always go a little bit beyond it. It compensates much. that we started five minutes too late. Sorry for the <laughs> technical uh, mess. I'm not a specialist. No, no, it created the uh, suspense, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. Thank we, you, made people, good. we made people become curious. Absolutely, absolutely. It was <laughs> a great point. A great point, absolutely. Okay. So we will, we will let everyone know uh, our next broadcast will be in three weeks, more or less, and we will let everyone know what we're going to talk about. So all these conversations are available on the Instagram uh, uh, IGTV and on YouTube as well. And thank you very much again, Jean-Claude. Have a lovely evening, and I shall see you very, very soon. Yes, see you soon. Thank you, Pietro. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. All bye the bye. best. Bye. 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 bye.